As our circle of knowledge expands, so does the circumference of darkness surrounding it. We have been able to clone humans for seven years, but as far as we know, no one has been able to clone humans, to clone a whole person legally. It turns out ethics is not the only thing holding scientists back, and cloning can be very dangerous, often ineffective, and most of all, we do not have a reason to do it. Today, I'll be talking about the fine line between ethics and science. Two sisters entered the world prematurely by emergency cesarean. The twins had a secret almost no one at the hospital, except one man, Dr. He Juanku. The twins were his first creation, the world's first known genetic, genetically modified baby. He had worked towards this for two years, altering their genes, embryo, their genes as embryos to make them resistant to their father's HIV infection. He suffered condemnation from China and from abroad for manipulating life building blocks using a relatively untested editing. A day later, Chinese officials declared his experiment to evil. Dr. He left behind the mystery that motivated him to defy his bill's widely held ethical principles. He also wanted to he also wanted to address the injustice of China against families with HIV positive positive parents who are barred from fertility treatment. However, if genetic cloning can be can protect humanity from a lifetime of persecution and illness, surely Dr. He and his work should be praised rather than condemned. Human reproductive cloning remains universally condemned, primarily, primarily for psychology psychological, social, and health risks. Science and research is rarely black and white, and the four pillars of ethics are principles that assess the best way to go about ethical issues. This includes um, autonomy, beneficence, non-beneficence, and justice.